Well, this is a big negotiation, and so all sides are taking their hardest stance, particularly Israel, saying no two-state solution. And part of that is Israel. Israel doesn't even have a coherent position because they haven't even described what they want to do with the Palestinian people. Like what? What? Like we're all coming to the bargaining table, and like the opening position from Israel is like we will do the genocide. That's not even a bargain. What are you talking about? Um, there, there's not even it, 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 they're not even acting in like a rational. Like, what are the... <sighs> Saudi Arabia won't normalize Israel relations without Palestinian state plan, top diplomat says. A non-starter for Israel's government. We only have so much time before the Palestinians are all f dead, you know. Uh, it's, we, we have to make a decision. It is... So, remember how I've said before that fascist countries always destroy themselves? Look at how Israel is torpedoing everything. Um just because they want to irrationally kill Palestinians so badly. Like, Israel relies on maintaining peaceful relations with its neighbors, but it's been tanking all of that. It's been destroying, like, uh, 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 years of peace talks with, with Saudi Arabia to try to, like, maintain better relations with them. All of that's going down the f drain because they want to kill Palestinians so badly. Like, that's it, you know? This is what I mean. Total irrationality. Arab peace proposal for Gaza takes shape as top Biden advisor lands in the region. The plan, which has been rejected by Israel, envisions pathway for creation of Palestinian state. I love this, dude. Literally everyone is trying desperately to keep Israel from doing the thing that they're trying to do. Like, Israel, every regional power, everyone, it's like, please, God, stop the thing that you're doing. Even objectively evil countries like Saudi Arabia. And, and, and Israel's like, nope. Nope. We're deceptively close to the genocide actually being seen through as well. Once the starvation, disease, and forced displacement really set in, we'll see casualty numbers and estimates skyrocket. Yeah, if you'll ever hear about them, Israel's been steadily killing off all the f journalists and keeping people from accessing the uh, refugee camps. So, you know, they'll they'll just shrug and go like, ah, oh, like, <laughs> Israel walking up towards you with a suspiciously two million Palestinian-shaped belly. What? I don't know where they went. They just went off somewhere, I guess, burp. Politics. Just last week, there was a poll that showed that the majority of Israelis are not ready for that. They're not ready for a ceasefire and an immediate. Ah, uh, that's so sad for them that they're not ready for that. That's ah, uh, mm, that sucks. Two-state solution, and so he Netanyahu is saying that in part because he feels he has to. But behind the scenes, there have been discussions about some kind of language. Maybe it's not exactly two-state, but it's enough. Palestinian governance over Gaza and enough of a framework for a pathway for Palestinian political sovereignty where a Palestinian uh, body oversees Gaza and has control over civil affairs. There's hope that other Gulf states and Arab states, including Egypt, would provide boots on the ground. And it's someone told me the other day that it was like four way chess. It's so complex to have every single party involved. It's really not. They just need to stop killing Palestinians. It's not that complex. Like the, the negotiations thus far are uh, Israel indiscriminately killing civilians and people tell them to stop and they say no. And they're like, OK, what if we made a deal with you? And they say no. And that's it. Like, but there's not even a deal happening. What negotiations are taking place? Get something out of it and get enough. Couldn't you argue that's how Gaza used to be? Yes. We're, li we're just talking about apartheid. If you're saying, oh, they're not a separate state, you know, but they have like their own rules. We're talking about apartheid. Again. Actually sign on to the deal. I mean, clearly a two state solution is a huge obstacle here. But what are some of the other obstacles complicating a potential pact? Uh, Israel wants to kill Palestinians. Well, on the American side, there are some issues about Saudi demands potentially, although there's real desire from both of those two countries to make this happen. It would be a political win for Biden. Um, MBS clearly wants to do it under the right conditions. The main place where things are stuck are in Israel, and that's primarily due to this right-wing government under Benjamin Netanyahu. But even though he's saying publicly no two-state solution, there are conversations happening, and you he's never- He's Sundere, guys. Netanyahu's just Sundere, you know?
um, when it, when when Netanyahu uh, says, "Yeah, we're gonna kill him. Yeah, we're gonna displace him. Yeah, we don't care. We're not negotiating. We want to kill him. Kill, 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 kill." They're like our biblical enemy. Kill, 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 kill. When he says that, what he actually means is like he's he's just sort of like it's Sundari, you know. He like secretly wants you to like open up to him after the school prom, and he'll say like, "Okay, maybe maybe I actually secretly don't want to genocide all Palestinians." Never know in the Middle East. Uh, you probably wouldn't have guessed that the Abraham Accords would have been signed. And so I would say that never say never. There's enough momentum that it, these talks are continue, continuing to stay alive, at least for the moment. All right. Anna Schechter, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Stay out. Thank you. Dude, it's so bleak over there. Saudi Arabia would make peace with Israel even if Jerusalem refuses to move toward the creation of a Palestinian state, Energy Minister Eli Cohen claimed in an interview with the Times of Israel. Speaking from his new office in Jerusalem last week, the former foreign minister stressed that security concerns regarding the Iranian axis would trump Riyadh's demands that a two-state solution be part of a normalization package. Peace with Saudi Arabia is absolutely a possibility, said Cohen. The war of October 7th underscore the fact that Saudi Arabia needs this peace just as much as Israel, if not more. If not more? It'll receive the tools primarily from the U.S. to deal with the Iranian threat and Islamist terror. So this guy's argument is like, hey, who cares about the Palestinians being genocided? The real threat here is um, uh, Iran, you know? Holden blood feast, okay? Look, what if by peace, the peace we're referring to doesn't actually involve saving Palestinian lives, but rather... Uh, allying against the um, the I Iranian Islamist threat. Who attacked Saudi Arabia four years ago, asked Cohen, referring to a 2019 strike in two key oil facilities inside the kingdom. Iran and the Houthis. Hmm. Man, I remember that in 2019 when the Houthis unprompted attacked Saudi Arabia. Man, don't you just hate it when Yemen um, in 2019 just like randomly attacked Saudi Arabia? The IDF struck the Gaza municipality building so Gaza won't be able to count casualties as accurately. Luckily, staff was, uh, stuff was backed up elsewhere. There will be an ICJ ruling on Friday. Gotcha. This war emphasizes how important a regional alliance, regional stability is, argued Cohen, and that the one who threatens Israel and the moderate Muslim states is the Shiite axis. Saudi Arabia, moderate Muslim state. Okay. Oh, yeah, dude. I heard they recently allowed women to drive. Dude, it, this is unironic, like, Holden Bloodfeast shit. Like, hey, man, all geopolitics must be oriented. This is like modern containment theory, you know? As long as we we, we stop the, the you know, the Shiite menace, the, the, the evil empire emanating from Iran. They say the word containment a lot now. We're literally doing it again, except with uh, Iranian Islam rather than communism. I'm pretty sure Iranian women have more rights than Saudi women. They do. Like Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Cohen largely ruled out a two-state solution. A Palestinian state is something I don't see happening, said Cohen. We saw that Israel retreated from Gaza, and Gaza turned into a terror state ruled by the Hamas terror group funded by Iran. Hmm. We all understand the Palestinian Authority is problematic, he continued. The PA is the only place in the world that pays salaries to the murderers of Jews? It's the only place in the world that pays incentives to murder people? What? Well, leaving aside the accusation, it's the only place that pays to murder people. That's like the world's oldest profession. What are you talking about? What? Every country does this. It's... what? These people are insane. They are. They are genuinely insane. Um, Eli Cohen. Haven't we covered this guy a lot before? That name sounds awfully familiar to me. I wish I had a better memory. Eli Cohen, Israel's greatest spy. Is it that one? Or is that just a person with the same name? Same name, different guy? Okay. Man, the original Eli Cohen had his shit on lock. Look at this mother... Hell yes. This is how a spy should look. OSS, Sonduset, bullshit. This Eli Cohen, there we go. They're talking about the PA paying the family of anyone who dies as a result of the occupation. Israel says that incentivizes terrorism. Oh, okay. Yeah, this guy's a Netanyahu stooge. So yeah, I guess the current state of um, of the uh, proposed peace talks and accords is uh, Israel hasn't budged even remotely and nothing has changed. Nice. Glad, uh, keep it, uh, glad Netanyahu has been screening Biden's calls for like a month now. Um, 
he won't like negotiate. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm I'm thinking SEAL Team Six might be the uh might be the morally correct answer here. That's that's why I'm against the Houthis um indiscriminately attacking civilian vessels, okay? Because that's moderate lib shit. Oh, economic pressure? Okay. I think it's I think some zero dark thirty solution uh would be far more radical, actually. Hey, now Israel's offering Gaza their own island. Yeah, I saw that. Israeli foreign minister presents idea for artificial island off Gaza in EU meeting. Brilliant. Just, it's it's remarkable to see, like, the Jewish question play out all over again in reverse, where you have, like, hey, here are our undesirables. Let's, like, construct a big plan to um, remove all of them from our nation. And then as, like, those plans don't work, because it turns out that's insane shit. Like, it's like, that's not a workable solution. More and more... Uh, when you ask them, hey, what do you plan on doing with the Palestinians? Netanyahu and their government is like, I don't know. What do you think we're going to do? Like, th we're unironically doing final solution shit right now. We're, we're like the, 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 we're do the whole lead up of like every solution but death gets brought about. I wonder why the chat does that. You're being dishonest. That's just some minister. That doesn't mean anything. How's that dishonesty? First of all, that's a minister who's representing Israel at an EU meeting. That's a foreign minister. Second of all, Israel's been doing this. What if we put them somewhere else bullshit for months now? Like that's not like this is just a particularly silly version of that general tendency. Yeah, years, not just months, like years, of course, but since October 7th. This is the Madagascar plan. Yeah, the the um Israel doesn't have the, uh, you know, capacity to move them all over to uh, Madagascar, so they have to make a, a new island, actually. Isn't this like Attack on Titan? It's exactly like Attack on Titan. Yeah. Why do Israel supporters constantly say the words of the government officials have no bearing on the situation? That's not just Israel supporters. The f legal team representing Israel at the International Court of Justice literally said that. They said you can't infer genocidal intent from the words of government officials in Israel. They literally said that. So, like, it's it's not just, like, a random, you know, decentralized argument. That is the official position of the Israeli state. Uh, ooh, ooh, we are just small beans. It, we are birthday boys. We have anxiety. It's, it, it, th that's, that's the actual plan. They think Netanyahu and his government is an aberration of Israeli politics. Yeah, a bunch of people were willing to point out, I think, in some places correctly, that in Russia, the problem isn't just the Kremlin and Putin. The Russian population is pretty Hitlerite as well, and that is true. Um, but that accusation is doubly true in Israel. There, are the 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 volume of Hitler particles in Israel, all the polling we have of like what they want and what they believe. Holy shit, you know, like it is it is not like Israel is just ruled over by some crazy far right dictator. Well, the the best example of that is is. Iran, where the population is way more liberal than the government. But in, in, in Israel, man, Jesus. Genuinely a lost people. Yeah, they found their homeland and immediately lost their souls. Jesus Christ. It's all material condition stuff, obviously. In a better set of political circumstances, you know, the population will shift back to sane, sensible beliefs. But...